The Purkinje cell is the largest neuron in the cerebellar cortex and is its only output element. Purkinje cells have two features which make them unique. First, their dendrites have a large number of calcium channels, with intradendritic recordings showing typical dendritic calcium spikes. Second, the cell receives 150 to 200,000 parallel fiber synapses, more than any other neuron in the brain, but only a single climbing fiber synapse. Integrating this large number of synaptic inputs poses a challenging problem in neuronal modeling. We developed a detailed computer model of a rat Purkinje cell, which we ran on an Intel Touchstone Delta, a roughly 500 processor MIMD machine. Both the morphology and the ionic channels were modeled as accurately as available experimental data allow. The various colored regions correspond to the various ionic channel densities in the model. The red soma has all the sodium and fast potassium channels. The green dendrites are spiny dendrites, which receive the parallel fiber inputs on dendritic spines which are invisible at this resolution. These dendrites have calcium channels and calcium-activated potassium channels. The single climbing fiber synapse of a Purkinje cell is received by the thick yellow dendrites and the main blue dendrite, a transitional zone with mixed channel densities. These channels were modeled using Hodgkin-Huxley-like equations based on published voltage clamp experiments. Purkinje cells have fairly flat dendritic trees, which are stacked closely together in the cerebellar cortex. Our model has three distinctive planes in its dendritic tree, which is fairly typical. The model was optimized to simulate a conventional slice experiment with current injected into the soma. On the left, we show the membrane voltage from minus 80 to plus 40 millivolts, and on the right, the submembrane calcium concentration from 0 to 8 micromolar in the 1600 compartments of our model. Elapsed time is given in milliseconds. Here we show the first three somatic action potentials at a slow animation speed. Note that the depolarization during these sodium spikes does not spread far into the dendrites and that the calcium influx is minimal. Now we speed up the animation to show the dendritic calcium spikes during the current injection. The voltage scale shown is not linear. It has been optimized to show events in the minus 60 to minus 30 millivolt range in which most dendritic spikes occur. The calcium spikes are not synchronous over the whole dendritic tree. They originate at the top of the dendrite and then propagate downward in a fast wave. Sodium spikes have a much lower amplitude during these calcium spikes, but because of the faster animation, they are hard to see. Each calcium spike is also followed by a hyperpolarization of the complete cell, caused by the calcium-activated potassium channels. The calcium concentration image at the right shows that the rise in calcium concentration comes after the calcium spike depolarization and that it is restricted to certain parts of the dendritic tree. The model thus accurately simulates current injection experiments and it also responds robustly to changes in channel densities. We also tested the model's response to a climbing fiber synaptic input. Synaptic channels were added to the appropriate part of the dendrite. We show the same display with voltage at the left and calcium concentration at the right. The events following the climbing fiber input at time zero go very fast. There is an initial localized depolarization which causes a somatic spike. This depolarization activates the calcium channels in the spiny dendrites and thus spreads throughout the dendritic tree, causing the typical plateau phase of the climbing fiber response. The depolarization is not homogeneous, as some dendritic branchlets depolarize more quickly or more completely than other branchlets. There is a huge calcium influx, which will open dendritic calcium-activated potassium channels. This causes a long hyperpolarization, which spreads slowly throughout the cell. Thus, this model also accurately simulates the climbing fiber response. We use the model to examine how the Purkinje cell integrates its multitudinous parallel fiber synaptic inputs. Our simulation protocol did the following. It provided continuous, asynchronous, excitatory parallel fiber inputs. It combined these with asynchronous inhibitory inputs 
like those provided by the stellate cells, and it examined the somatic response to an additional small synchronous parallel fiber input. On the left, we again show the membrane voltage, but on the right, we now show the simulated excitatory inputs to the cell. Each red signal indicates the increase in synaptic conductance following an input's activation. Initially, we see only the asynchronous activity, but at time zero, a synchronous input is applied to the top of the cell. Note that the asynchronous inputs cause subtle changing differences in membrane voltage between different parts of the cell, shown here by the flickering blue of slight hyperpolarizations. Classic cable theory, which assumes a passive dendritic membrane, predicts that an input at the top of the dendrite, and thus distal from the soma, would not be very effective because of electrotonic attenuation along the length of the dendrite. However, the membrane voltage image shows that the soma fires a spike six milliseconds after the input, which is clearly caused by the depolarization following the input. Our model thus shows that the calcium channels in the Purkinje cell dendrite make the amplitude of the somatic response insensitive to the location of synaptic inputs. The predictions of classic cable theory are contradicted because the calcium channels amplify distant synaptic inputs. Let us look at this in more detail. We will show the same sequence at a slower rate. We again have membrane voltage on the left and calcium concentration on the right. The initial response to the synchronous excitatory input at time zero is very localized. But after a few milliseconds, the depolarization spreads to adjoining parts of the dendritic tree. The calcium image shows that this is because calcium channels are activated in the adjoining parts, causing them to depolarize also. By the time the soma fires a spike at 5.9 milliseconds, the whole center top of the dendrite is depolarized, as is the thick part of the dendrite leading up to the soma. This spreading depolarization amplifies and prolongs the dendritic synaptic response, improving its transmission to the soma. As we have said, the amplitude of the somatic response in the Purkinje cell does not depend on the location of the synaptic input. We will now compare two synaptic conductance images with a distal synchronous image on the left and a proximal synchronous image on the right. The proximal input is in the lower right dendrite. The soma begins firing more quickly, roughly three milliseconds after the input. But the essential point is that the cell fires in both cases, independent of the location of the stimulus. We will show this in more detail at a slower animation speed. The somatic response is independent of synaptic location because distal inputs are amplified, while proximal inputs are not. For the proximal input, the depolarization at the time of the spike has hardly spread beyond the original input location, while for the distal input, as we saw before, the entire region of the dendrite has been depolarized. This difference in amplification is caused by current being drained to the soma itself, which affects proximal inputs, so that amplification increases linearly with distance from the soma. The primary conclusion of this modeling work is that the active calcium channels in the Purkinje cell dendrite make this cell insensitive to the exact location of its parallel fiber inputs. All of the 150 to 200,000 parallel fiber synapses have equal access to the soma.